Those of you who follow my channel for quite some time know that I recently built a new home server rack. I added a massive new storage server and upgraded my firewall system. But the network setup was always somewhat a temporary solution. It's just a lot of work. <laughs> But today I finally want to show you my new home network structure and what I've changed there. I've added a new managed switch from Sophos, one of the first switches Sophos makes by the way, and I want to explain how I've connected it to my firewall. I've split my home network into multiple segments by using VLANs and this allows me to have a very well organized setup in my server rack. It's also very secure and protected because the firewall scans all the traffic that goes from one VLAN to another. And this was so much fun to experiment and set up. And of course I wanted to show you how to do that, so let's get started. By the way, for all the people who will ask now, this is not a product review about my new Switch. I wasn't paid by Sophos for making this video. I don't want this channel to become a product or service driven place. I always focus on free educational content. But I'm also working for Sophos now over five years. So that's why I got the firewall and this new Switch for my testing setup. It's not really that I feel I would need to excuse myself for making the videos in the way that I want them to make. But I honestly want to be fully transparent with you and tell you whenever I cover a product or service if that's a paid content or if I'm somehow affiliated with the organization behind it. That being said, no matter which products or services you are using in your home lab, I don't really care. I hope this gives you some ideas and inspiration how to use VLANs or structureize your network with managed switches. Okay, so first I want to quickly give you an overview of what I've configured in my home network so far. And I have created this incredible awesome ASCII diagram. <laughs> I absolutely love these terminal things. This is mainly just for me to remember which port is connected in which way and how my home lab resources communicate with each other. And as you can see, it got pretty complex here. Uh, but let me better start at the beginning and tell you how my home lab was structured in the past. And as most of you guys, I also started with a simple local network connected to my home router. That is a Fritz box in Germany. And I started installing a Linux server, later added a Proxmox server, TrueNAS. You all know the story. And that all worked pretty well. However, as you know, IT security is my business. So I wanted to create a more secure home network by adding an enterprise grade firewall system, the Sophos XGS that I placed between my local network switch and my internet uplink. I've also made a separate video about this firewall system and my setup. I will put a link to this video in the description. And by the way, if you like my videos and you feel they are helping you, leave a like and subscribe to the channel. That would be really awesome. Okay, so overall the network setup before wasn't really bad, though the main problem I had with it was the limited flexibility. Because in this setup my entire local network was connected to a single 24 port unmanaged switch. That means all devices that were connected to this single network device were in the same network. But this is not what I wanted for my servers because I wanted to put them into a separate network that is protected by my firewall. And to separate my network into multiple security zones, I needed to connect these servers to a separate physical port on the firewall. That is exactly what I've done. But what if I want to add more servers? Maybe a Raspberry Pi Kubernetes cluster or another NAS system or server. Who knows what my home lab will look like in a few years. I always would need to add these additional devices to a separate port on the firewall or I would need to buy another switch just for this server network. And that didn't sound like a great idea because buying another device is also a very unflexible solution. If I want to add another network I would also need to add another switch and so on. And the solution to this is use a managed switch where I could not just only connect all my devices to but also virtually put each of the switch ports into a different network. This is exactly what you can do with VLANs and that allows me to split the switch into different security sections, just like on the firewall. And because I also wanted to filter traffic across these VLANs with my firewall, I needed a fast transmission speed between those two devices. That's why I bundled two of the 10 gigabit ports on the devices together with an LAG, a link aggregation group. So this aggregates the speed of the 10 gigabit port so it can transfer 20 gigabit per second. And this is very useful because all the traffic in my home lab is actually going through this connection. So not only the traffic between one VLAN and another VLAN, also the internet traffic is constantly going through this link. 
So overall, my current setup now looks much cleaner. It's better organized. I also bought separate ethernet cables in different colors to easily identify which VLANs the devices are connected to. And the blue cables are my LAN zone, the green are my WAN zone, so internet uplinks, and the fiber optical cables are in the DMZ zone, and the gray cables are in the management zone. They are all connected to the same switch, but when a computer from my LAN zone, which is one of the blue cables, wants to connect to a service in the management zone, for example, the gray cables, the switch won't route this traffic directly because this is in a separate VLAN. So it will route this traffic over the LAG port to the firewall first. And then the firewall will decide, hey, is this computer allowed to connect into the management zone? And do I need to scan the traffic for any malware or attacks? So this is freaking amazing. And of course, I want to show you what I've done to configure this on the switch and the firewall. Let's take a look at that. First, I want to show you how I've built the LAG port between the switch and the firewall. And I'm using a network protocol which is called LACP. LACP stands for Link Aggregation Control Protocol. And it's an IEEE standard protocol to bundle physical ports together and form a single logical link. So that's what you can call an LAG, a link aggregation group. Other terms to describe it are trunk port, bundling, bonding, or teaming. But these words actually all mean the same thing. In increase the speed and the fault tolerance of the link between the network devices. It's also worth noting that LACP is a vendor independent protocol and supported by most of the devices. So some vendors also have built proprietary solutions and protocols to achieve the same kind of thing. For example, Cisco, Juniper, all these guys have their own implementations as well. But LACP is the industry standard that all managed switches and firewalls should work with. To configure an LAG, you need two or more ports. I guess it's up to eight ports maximum, I think. And you need to configure these ports on both devices accordingly. So on the software switch interface, I have configured these settings in the link aggregation menu and put the ports 27 and 28 into group one. It's really simple as that. <laughs> And on the Sophos XG firewall, you need to go into network interface settings and create a new LAG. Here I just gave it the name trunk and set the hardware name to LAG. These are just the names, so just pick anything you like. And the member interfaces need to be the two ports that are connected to the switch, of course. In my case, these are port A2 and A4, the two 10 gigabit fiber optical ports. As a mode, I've now chosen LACP because the other mode would just be a simple failover. Of course, we want to use this protocol to aggregate the speeds of both ports. And the next setting is a bit specific to Sophos XG because every active interface needs to be in a network zone and also have an IP configuration. And I think I need to explain this a bit because otherwise it might be confusing. The settings that I've chosen here are the DMZ zone and the network 10.20.0.1 with a subnet mask of 16. This is the network where all my servers and protected devices are in. I don't know if that's really the best way to configure it, but with this example, I can perfectly explain the concept of VLANs and what's the difference between tagged and untagged ports. This is a concept I actually found completely confusing the first time I heard about it, but I tried to explain it as simple as possible. Okay, so just forget for a moment the concept of trunk ports and VLANs because currently the connection between the Surface XG firewall and the switch, this is just a simple network connection. The only thing that is special here is that it's not a single network port, it's an LAG of two 10 gigabit ports where the connection speed is 20 gigabit. That's also visible in the Surface XG UI by the way, but it's treated like a normal physical interface. And so now comes the interesting part here, because I have a few servers connected to my switch. They should be in this zone, like my Proxmox machine and my NAS system. But I also have some other devices like my PCs and laptops. They shouldn't be in this zone. So I somehow needed to tell the switch, hey, the port 27 and 28 and the two ports for my servers, this is my DMZ zone, but the other ports, they should be in a different zone. This is what you can do with VLANs, Virtual Local Area Network. VLANs extend the Ethernet frames by an additional VLAN tag. So that means Ethernet frames that transport network packets like IP, TCP or UDP protocols, they have a small annotation, so to speak. And that tells the devices in which logical or virtual network they belong. 
These tags are defined in the IEEE 802.1Q standard. So all network devices that understand this standard, they will know what a VLAN tag is when they see it. Uh, by the way, also other devices can understand this tag. So your PC, your Linux server should be capable of that as well. But of course, it's mostly used and configured on managed switches and firewalls. Okay, so let's assume a device receives an Ethernet frame with a VLAN tag. It doesn't know yet what to do with it. For the device, it's really just an information. For example, this packet belongs to VLAN ID 1 and the other one belongs to VLAN ID 2. What the devices should do with these packets, that needs to be configured on the interface. This logic can be configured by using tags and untagged ports on the switch. Tagging means the device will add this VLAN tag to all Ethernet frames on this specific port and untagging means the device will remove a VLAN tag from all Ethernet frames on this port. Confusing? Yeah, I know. But let me show you that with an example so then it probably makes more sense. In the VLAN settings of the software switch, you have a default network. So this is always the VLAN with the ID 1. You can't change this ID. I just changed the name of this VLAN to DMZ because that is the network which it's currently connected to. And we now can configure for each port if it should be a member of this VLAN DMZ and if the switch should add a VLAN tag on this port, these are the tagged ports, or if it should remove the VLAN tag on this port, these are the untagged ports. As you can see, currently all network ports are configured as untagged ports in this network. So this is just like the behavior of an unmanaged switch. It will treat all ports in the same way. It won't apply any VLAN tags, it will just remove them if it sees it. No, I don't want this, of course. Um, I only want the devices to be in the DMZ network when they are connected to the correct ports. So I first removed all the port memberships in this configuration and I specifically selected the 10 gigabit ports on this switch, the port 27 and 28, which are my two LAG ports connected to the firewall. And I also enabled the DMZ VLAN on the port 25 and 26. One port is connected to my Proxmox server and the other one is my NAS system. It's also important to configure them as untagged ports here because the devices that are connected here don't have any VLAN tags configured yet. So they don't understand this tag if they would see it. In this setup, I just connected the firewall to my two servers, the Proxmox server and the NAS server. And I quickly checked if I can ping each other and that's perfectly working. So yet we haven't really used any VLAN tags so far. But now I want to configure the other ports for the switch. For example, I now want to connect my PC to the port 1 and I want this PC not to be in the DMZ zone. I want to create another VLAN for it, which I just call LAN and give it the VLAN ID 2. So all the ports that are now configured in this VLAN will understand the VLAN tag 2 is dedicated to this network. And because I want this network to be connected to the firewall on a different interface, I will use the tagged ports on the LAG connection. So this tells the switch to add the VLAN tag 2 to all Ethernet frames that are sent out on this LAG port to the firewall. And when the firewall now receives these packets, it can see Okay, this Ethernet frame has a VLAN tag with the ID 2. This belongs to the LAN network and not to the DMZ. But my PCs and laptops, the access points, everything that is connected on the switch ports, they don't understand VLAN tag ID 2. They just think they are connected to a normal network. That's why I have configured the ports where these devices are connected to as untagged ports. So when the traffic is sent out from the firewall back to my PC, it will of course still have a VLAN tag 2 because it's coming over the LRG port. But when the traffic is sent out to the port 1 to my PC, the switch will remove this VLAN tag and the PC just processes it like usual. One thing that is on this software switch a bit different than on other switches may be the VLAN tags are only important for traffic that the switch sends out on this port. So it will add or remove this tag whether this is an untagged or tagged port. But what happens when the switch receives traffic? For example, my PC sends a ping request to the firewall and you could now assume this is automatically assigned to VLAN ID 2 because this is an untagged member port. In fact, some vendors do that and automatically attach any income coming traffic to the VLAN this port is an untagged member of. That's unfortunately not the case 
in software switch or it might be a feature depending on how you see it because incoming traffic that does not have a vlan tag such as normal traffic coming from my pc that needs to be assigned to the correct vlan and this function is called pvid and ingress filter in the software switch so in this menu you can add ingress rules for each port for example to which vlan it belongs and if the switch will accept the traffic or if it does any filtering so you can see this device is pretty complex it's much more than a simple switch it has many advanced features and management utilities but here i just needed to select all the ports that are untagged members of the lan zone and switch their pvid to the VLAN ID 2. Great, so now the ports from 1 to 16 belong to the LAN network. All the packets that are sent from my devices to the firewall will be automatically assigned by the switch using PVID. And once the traffic is sent out to the LIG port on the firewall, the switch will know, okay, the traffic belongs to VLAN ID 2. I need to add the VLAN tag so that the firewall knows, okay, this traffic belongs to the LAN zone and not to the DMZ zone. Of course, we also need to tell the firewall that and what it should do with this traffic. So on the Sophos XG, we need to configure a VLAN interface on the LIG port and give it the same ID. These IDs always need to match the logic on the switch. And here you can treat this like any other physical interface. It's virtual, but you can give it another IPv4 configuration. For example, the network 10.10.0.0 with a subnet mask of 16. And when you save this configuration, you can see this virtual interface and that it belongs to the LIG physical port. So on the firewall, the trunk port itself is the untagged port and the LAN interface is the tagged port. Now the configuration on the switch and the firewall match exactly. I know this is a lot of stuff and it's sometimes hardly to understand. I can just encourage you to set up VLANs yourself in your home network, not just because it's a great feature to protect and manage networks, but also because it can be a perfect exercise if you're learning networking or studying for your CCNA or Network Plus certifications. Because this requires knowledge in so many areas about computer networks and it just makes fun to experiment with that. I hope you like this as well. And this principle can be used to create more VLANs as well, of course. So I guess you can add up to 4,000 96 VLANs in a network that gives you enough flexibility to set up even big company environments with that and by bonding multiple uplinks with 10 gigabit or even more speed link multiple switches or firewalls together there's nothing you can't do with that absolutely amazing I also added another VLAN called MGMT for management and this is something like a backup network for my device configurations such as my IoT devices or any additional interface on my Proxmox or Firewall. I gave it the ID 5. And I also added the last eight ports of the switch to this new VLAN. Now for this VLAN, I didn't add a tagged port on the LRG because I want this network to be fully isolated from the firewall. This is just an internal network that should not be routed to the firewall's traffic, so no internet access, no scanning, but it's great for a testing or backup management network, which is fully isolated from the rest of the ports. You can also do things like that with managed switches, even though you're not really using a VLAN tag. I also needed to add the PVID, of course, on this port because otherwise Otherwise, the pods will be still part of the VLAN, the DMZ. And that's it. So this is my current configuration so far. Now I have a very well organized setup which I can fully protect with a software switch and firewall. And if I want to create another network, it's now very simple for me to just change the VLAN settings on the individual port on the switch. That's very, very flexible. And ah, by the way, if you found this interesting, but you'd like to see more about the system, like the software switch or even the XG firewall, I might do more videos about these topics if you like it, so please leave me a comment what you would like to see. But for now, that should be all. I hope you liked the video and I will catch you in the next one. Take care, bye bye.